Hello guys, I'm Pickles Parker and today I will be giving you my mid-season review of Arrow Season 6. Enjoy! So yes, Arrow Season 6, I think I should probably start this review like I started my Gotham Season 4 and Flash Season 4 mid-season reviews by just talking about my thoughts on Arrow Season 5. Now, personally this is, in my opinion, the most overrated Arrow Season. People seem to be raving about it, saying, oh yeah, it's a return to form. Best season since season two. And I'm just like, what? No, because in my opinion, I think this series is only just a slight step up from series season four. It's it's done there. It, it's pretty bad. I think season three is better than this. Um, I think a lot of the season feels boring. It doesn't have any logic, and it defies its own logic, and it just feels like a retread of so many Arrow tropes, and it only gets good four episodes from the end, and I'll admit those four episodes are pretty good, especially the finale, titled Lee and You, I mean that was brilliant. But a finale doesn't make a season. I think that's what people need to remember. Because although that finale was absolutely brilliant. One of the best Arrow seasons we've got in a long while. The actual season uh, running up to it wasn't actually that great. Um, And I really fell out of love with Arrow, I'll say. I didn't hate season 4 as much as other people, I still think it's pretty crap if I'm honest, but I didn't hate it as much as other people. Um, I watched that pretty fine. Season 5 however, I actually fell out of love and got really behind with episodes. Um, yeah, I just really didn't like it. Like I said, the logic defied it, they tried to they wanted to make Oliver a hero where he says, oh yeah, I want to be more of a hero than a vigilante. Uh, and then he says, actually, no, I'm going to start killing people again. Like, make up your mind, come on. Um, as well as Josh Shigara uh, acted the part, uh, Prometheus was literally just a death stroke repackaged. And his motives weren't even that good because his dad was somebody who he, the arrow killed off screen. Like, they're really scraping the barrel for ideas here. It's practically Deathstroke in his every single move. Um, and I don't think the team were quite right. I think, although they said oh, it seems like the Felicity stuff from Season 4 that uh, irritated fans and the whole Olicity thing was gone. It was back here. Why? And... I just don't think it was interesting enough. I think it was a boring build-up to a good finale. And I just wasn't a fan of Season 5. But Season 6... Um, despite a popular opinion, I actually really like Season 6. Uh, it's definitely better than season 5. Um, I think the whole thing where they've uh, resolved the uh, season 5 click hangers has been really good. Um, and I really like um, the whole team dynamic, how they're shaking things up. Um, 
Yeah, uh, actually, let's go through the episodes. So, Fallout, I really liked. Um, like I said, I think they um, resolved the Season 5 cliffhanger really nicely. And I also uh, think that Oliver's dynamic with his son was really nice as well, because that whole thing with his son has really irritated me throughout Season 4 and Season 5, but I think they got it right here, um, which is something that I, I really enjoyed even though if the child acting isn't the best. Um, I think that um, it was interesting how everybody was affected from what happened on the and you. Um, and I just think it was really nice. Tribute, I think, was a bit naff, if I'm honest. I think it was because it involved the whole Rapper thing, which is something I really didn't enjoy. I really didn't enjoy the flashbacks last year. Um, with the whole Russia thing, although I think quite a few people did. My friend, uh, Chris, um, really enjoyed them, but I, I just didn't, if I'm honest. So that's why I didn't really enjoy this, that episode, really, with the whole brother side of things where he's making a return. Next of Kane and Reversal, I quite liked, I think. I can't remember everything about them. Because this review is actually quite a while since the season ended, because obviously with the Christmas period and everything, um, I've had to take gaps and breaks um, with my last mid-season review of The Flash being like a month ago. But uh, yeah, so I can't really remember much about them. All I do remember is in there it's with uh, Diggle becomes the Green Arrow, which is something I really liked. I liked the show experimenting, doing something it hasn't done before for a lengthy amount of time, and I think it was really nice to experiment with that with uh, Diggle. Deathstroke Returns, and I really like what they did with Deathstroke. I really like it. First I did, and I thought in the, the weak link of this season 5 finale was Deathstroke, because I wasn't a fan how he's suddenly good, and in Fallout I was a bit like, eh, best villain I were ever created, kind of wasted now. But I really like what they did in Deathstroke Returns. And uh, promises kept. It's kind of like a two-part, I suppose. Um, I really liked what they did um, with Deathstroke, making him a fully-fledged character, where almost making him kind of an anti-hero, really. Which I really, really liked. I liked how his son, King, was it King? I think it was King. Was it introduced and his dynamic there, um, and knowing that his son became more he is because of him. I really just like uh, Manu Bennett with Deathstroke and um, Slade so Wilson. I really like him in that two part. I think it's really nice um, expanding Slade's character. Um, and I really hope that we see Slade return because I just love Deathstroke. I was really happy when uh, I seen the name for that episode coming up, Deathstroke Returns. Um, because it was just so good, it was a really nice two parter. Um, I hope you, you return. Thanksgiving, I think, was good. I can't really remember much about that one. But yeah, I think that was quite good. Crisis on Earth X Part 2. Well, I'm not going to go into detail on that. Because if you want to see my full Crisis on Earth X review, then go on to my Flash Season 4 mid season review. Where I do, do a whole chunk on Crisis on Earth X in that. But yeah, um, based on the Arrow stuff, I'm not a fan how Arrow was portrayed in this at all. I think um, Oliver and Felicity's relationship has been decent in this. I actually haven't been as an irritated by the Felicity thing in this season as others. I think because they're not doing the will they won't they will they won't they thing that pissed me off um, in um, season 4 and season Five, they're actually making them settle down and actually have a solid relationship, um, which is actually uh, quite nice. And that's why I'm a fan of them getting married, actually. Although it's a bit cringe, um, and the whole drama in um, Old Crisis on FX really irritates me. I think that actually uh, the whole outcome of them being married is better now they're settled down and they can't do the whole will they, won't they thing that irritated us fans. Um, so yeah, era can't see the level differences. Um, I really like this actually. Um, I really like how there's a... You have all of them for Misty's wedding that we actually see. Um, I really like the... Um, how there's a spy in the team and working them out. 
and all of that ultimately having to betray them. I really like the cliffhanger in that way you have been using versus the old, the originals. Um, and I really like the whole team of villains, because although that's uh, really come under fire how there's no mean villain, I actually kind of like it. Um, and I didn't think I would, but I think what I like is it's just change. You've only really had one villain in uh, Arrow, um, maybe apart from season one, maybe. But uh, I think that uh, it's nice to have a team of villains, because it's something I don't think Arrow's really done, and not as the main villain. Therefore, I don't think anybody in the team is strong enough to be the main bad guy. But I think it's really nice and experimental to have these, uh, this team of villains, which is something we haven't seen before in The Flash. I think uh, Richard Dragon he was tipped to be the big villain who is incredibly underwhelming, and he's not a strong character, he's incredibly bland. So I don't think he's really is the main guy. But I think he'll work, will work much better in the team, and I'm really looking forward to uh, how that's all resolved. I think that's actually going to be resolved in an episode, possibly tonight. I think. But yeah, um, see, so I've actually really enjoyed season six. It's not perfect. It's probably on par with something like season three, but it's a big step up from the la lackeys that have been season four and season five, where I've really fallen out of love for the show, and a lot of experimental elements which I don't think people have liked, I've actually really welcomed. I think Arrow's back in my good books, and it's back to the show that I really enjoyed. So I'm going to give it a uh, thumbs up. Um, so yeah, Arrow is slightly redeeming itself. Um, the redemption starting from the Season 5 finale, and now in Season 6. Um, Obviously, you will see me uh, next time in my uh, season three mid-season review of Legends of Tomorrow. But what are your thoughts on um, Arrow season six and where it's got up to so far? Comment below. Let me. Please like this video. Um, if you have enjoyed it, and if you want to see more content from my channel, then please hit subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hello, Gary and Adam. So, twice upon a time. Now, I went into this episode being really excited, and went out being disappointed. It's not a bad story, it's just a very flat one. Nothing happens, there's no plot, which is probably its main weakness. Peter Capaldi gives a brilliant performance though, and so does David Bradley, but he just, David Bradley, although he gives a brilliant performance, he just doesn't feel like the first Doctor, not only with the uh, sexist comments, but just like his mannerisms, he doesn't quite capture the essence of the first Doctor, although his performance is stellar as it is in An Adventure in Space and Time, the episode looks brilliant and the armistice scene I love but apart from that they can't really say anything good it's just a disappointing way to say goodbye to Peter Capaldi because he deserved better a lifelong Doctor Who fan and his era has been given some rubbish scripts um, and this is no exception really his, to sum up his era in one word is in word, two words is a missed opportunity and this is certainly what this episode is here Capaldi deserved better, and so did we. I'm going to give this episode a 5.5 out of 10. I am bitterly disappointed at an episode that had so much potential, and to say goodbye to a doctor that had so much potential, but just went nowhere because of the rubbish scripts. See you guys next week.